Why do we gather clutter? What is it in our psyche that allows us to buy something or bring something into our home and we put it to one side, maybe we get some value from it or some enjoyable activity from it and then it goes to one side. Think for example of have you got an exercise bike or a rowing machine in your garage or in a spare room or a shed at the bottom of the garden that you stopped using within a few months of the purchase? You spent the money, you got a little bit of activity from it and then it's gone into your hoarding section or your clutter area of the home. Looking at why we clutter, looking at why we hoard things is really opening up a psychological can of worms, to use that proverbial phrase. And as we delve deeper into the declutter journey, you will find things out about yourself and think, oh my goodness, it makes sense now, but at the time I had no awareness of why I was doing that, or what was driving me to attract and to accumulate this basically junk that is no longer being useful in my life. At the very least, you'll be surprised by some of the learning you go through in this declutter process. For example, why do I have Grandpa Tom's handmade coffee table in my living room when it was made 90 years ago, before my father was born, and yet I'm the person out of all our siblings who has ended up with that item? Is it because I have an emotional desire to connect with my grandparents through that piece of furniture? Is it because it's a nice coffee table and it's useful and I just want it for practical purposes? Is it because I feel if I let go of the coffee table, I will somehow be dishonoring the memory of my father and my grandfather? Could I let it go? How would I feel if I were to sell that item? To be honest, I think I feel really upset and worried. But so long as it has a value that is functional and it happens to be attractive, I can keep it. I'm just running through ideas as I look at an example. Why do I have in my attic a horrible Napoleonic heavy slate and stone and gilt mantelpiece clock that weighs about 10 kilos, that is relatively ugly, that I've never liked, I've never been attracted to. Actually, I've kept hold of it because my father collected clocks and this was part of his collection um, when his maiden aunt died she left him the clock, he kept the clock. When my father died, I got the clock along with other really attractive 19th century American clocks. But this ugly Napoleonic thing, I don't like it, I've never liked it. Um, even when I put it up for sale, nobody wanted it. It's okay for me just to have thrown it away. When I was first married, my best man and his wife gave us a beautiful hand-painted teapot and set of eight cups and saucers, all individually decorated with nice comments and appropriate artwork for my wife and I. But we divorced after 12 years, and yet 10 years later, I realized I was still carrying the teapot and teacups around in a box that had never been opened for 10 years. I thought about giving them away. I wanted to take them to a charity shop. And in the end, after worrying about it on two or three occasions over the course of a month, I simply put them in the bin. It was difficult because it felt like I was saying that my marriage was a waste of time and it wasn't. It felt like I was disrespecting the hours of work that my friends had put into designing and painting that for us. But then I thought to myself, do I use a teapot? Do I use china cups? No. I'm very much a regular user of coffee mugs. I don't want a teapot anymore in my life. And I hadn't used it for 10 years. So of course it was okay to let it go. Did I lose sleep that night that I took the teapot and the cups and saucers and put them in a dustbin? No, I didn't. It had occupied a space this sort of size, you know, in a, a large cardboard box with its packing materials to protect them. But I had moved that around multiple times to multiple houses in the 10 years since we got divorced and I'd been wasting time. I'd been paying a tiny portion of my rent just for that box. Regardless of all the others, that teapot and saucer set was something I didn't need. I had to let go of it. It took me only a few months 
after realising the amount of clutter I was carrying and, and walking around with. That was one of the items which was on my mind and I had to work out what to do with it. The right thing to do was just to say, thank you. We had value from it for several years during our marriage and it's gone. We're going to have some coffee now. Those are just random examples from my own circumstances when I began that process a while ago, before I started to bring together the ideas that formed the notes that became the manuscript of the book, Declutter Your Home. Those items of the coffee table, the Napoleonic clock and the teapot and saucer set are just examples from my personal experience. Think about it from your own perspective. What might you have in your house that you don't need? 